Hey everybody, it's Darian with another message for you for the 316s. Today's topic, give thanks. We're going to be looking at today giving thanks versus complaining. And we're going to see how we can get out a complaining attitude and replace it with thankfulness. And we're going to see in a story from the Bible just how one person did that and responded. And the, the thankfulness that the Bible points to is being thankful for all things, in all situations, and at all times. And that is something that is really hard to do. How do we do something like that? And in this message, I'm going to kind of show you how one responds to that and how one is thankful. I mean, truly thankful. We get into this mindset of just complaining. And when we do that, it's separating ourselves from being truly thankful for what the Lord has given us. Because if we really truly step back and look to everything that he's given us, we'd be different people. And I believe that in this story in, in Luke 17, which we're going to be turning to right now, that it's going to help us see how we can turn back to Jesus and be a little bit more thankful for the things we have, if not a lot more. So let's read Luke 17, and here is a group of 10 men hanging out with one another, and the only reason that they were hanging out is because they weren't allowed to go home to their families, they weren't allowed to be near other regular people who didn't have the same condition that they had. Now just imagine if you had a very serious condition, like the crazies. <laughs> if you had the crazies and you had to hang out with nine other crazy people, what what do you think would happen? You'd all go absolutely mad. Like, you'd probably fall off a cliff somewhere, but let's not go into that. So you're just hanging out with one another because you have that in common and you're just an outcast and you got no one else to hang out with. Well, this is what was these people were facing. And if you had leprosy, it was a defiling skin disease. It was considered unclean, and anybody who went near a leper had to run in the other direction and be like, Unclean! Unclean! No! Unclean! Please do it! Get away from me! But something like that. And here they are all together, and they see Jesus at a distance. Something sort of like this. And there they are yelling to Jesus. Jesus, Master, have pity on us, it says. Let's read uh, 14 through 16 here. It says, When he saw them, he said, and now this is Jesus saying this, Go show yourselves to the priests. And they went, and they were cleansed. Now this is talking about the ten lepers. They went, and Jesus, he didn't have to touch them or anything. He just said, Go present yourselves to the priests so that you can see your family again. Because those who are unclean, they couldn't be around their family if they didn't have leprosy too. So here's ten guys, everything in common. Now, Jesus is telling them, off in a distance, he didn't touch them. He said, just go present yourself to the priest. They were already healed. And when they went off, they realized that, hey, look, we're, we're healed now. Our open sores are gone. But one, when he realized that he was healed, he came back to the source. Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And this is what I, I got out of this. He, he thanked him. He was a Samaritan. This was the man who was the lowly of the low. He was still the most thankful. Actually, I just want to read on to the next thing. Jesus says, Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So I want you to realize, and this is what I mainly got out of this verse, and what I wanted you to take away today, that yes, he was the, the least likely to be thankful, but he didn't just receive healing from his leprosy. He received spiritual healing. And this is what we all need today. We're all broken in some way. And we all need that spiritual healing. Now this man, when Jesus acted in his life, he acted back. He responded. And we all need to take action and be thankful when Jesus has done something in our lives. What these nine men did is they had enough faith to, to go to the priests. But faith without action is dead. Let's remember this. The one man showed action. He came back. And out of his thankfulness, he was healed spiritually. But what about when things are going wrong in life? And the Bible points to us being thankful for all things, in all situations, and at all times. 
How in the world can we do that? And it's all about our attitudes. How can we get rid of that, that complaining mindset? We need to replace that with a thankful mindset and a thankful mouth. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. This is talking about believers here. No matter your circumstance, you can worship God. You can be grateful for the things that you have, guys. Now, we need to be thankful based on reality. Now, this thankfulness I'm asking you to have, I'm not talking about things that don't exist. We need to be thankful for things based on reality. Just because you're in a rough situation and it seems like there's no reason to be thankful for it. Maybe you can come to me and you can say, Darian, you don't get it. This is what's going on in my life. This is rough, this is difficult, and you're telling me that I need to be thankful? And yes, I might say that you have every reason not to be thankful, but even though it might be understandable to complain for your situation, that doesn't make it excusable. God has done so much. He's paid the ultimate penalty, and he gives us more grace every single day. Our, our th complaining attitude is not, not excusable in our lives. God is so good and has good plans for our lives. We know that by Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans for prosperity, not for evil, good plans, good things for your life. We need a, we need a heart that's not bent towards evil, but we need a heart that's, that's turning to God. We need a thankful heart, and it only comes from the good Father that helps us see the good in all things that truly exist all around us. Now, what I want you to look at is an excerpt from this book of Robinson Crusoe. So here's a man who has been shipwrecked on an island with no way off, no human life. And he still is saying that even in that dark situation, there's things to be thankful for. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Now I began to consider seriously my condition and the circumstances I was reduced to. And I drew up the state of my affairs in writing. So he's saying that I wrote everything down that was happening to me. As to deliver my thoughts from the daily pouring over them. And afflicting my mind. So what he's writing down, he's, he's keeping track of the good things that still exist. Even though there's a lot of bad things, he's going to be writing down a list of complaints. But thanks. So that the complaints don't overrun the thankfulness that he can have. He says, And as my reason began to now master my despondency, I began to comfort myself as well as I could, and to set the good against the evil, that I might have something to distinguish my case from one that is much worse than mine. And he was writing this down. He gave us an account an account for himself so that when the bad things came, when his mind started to take over and say, you have nothing to be grateful for, he had a list of the things that he can complain about, but the thanks. And I'm going to read that list to you. Complaint. I am cast upon a horrible, desolate island, void of all hope of recovery. How many of us feel like that? In a, in a lowly depression, how many of us feel like there's no hope, no recovery? We're just desolate islands. But here's his thanks. But I am alive. I did not drown as my ship's company was. Here's another complaint. This is the second one. I am singled out and separated, as it were, from the world to be miserable. Thanks. But I am singled out too from the ship's crew to be spared from death. That he, talking about God, that miraculously saved me from death, can deliver me from this condition. And he's talking about miserableness, complaining. Complaint. This is his third complaint. I have no clothes to cover me. Thanks. But I am in a hot climate where if I had clothes, I could hardly wear them. So God put him in that situation. Even though he didn't have clothes, he could still be thankful because he was in the climate where he could go without them. Complaints. I am without any defense or means to resist any violence of man or beast. He had no weapons. He had no way to defend himself. But here's his thanks. But I am cast on an island where there's no wild beasts to hurt me. As I saw on the coast of Africa. And what if I had been shipwrecked there? What if he had been shipwrecked on the coast of Africa? He would have had no way to defend himself. Here's his last complaint here, and this is the this is the major one. 
I have no soul to speak to or to relieve me. I have no one else to comfort me. I have no cell phone. I have no other friend to comfort me. But this is his thanks. But God. I might not have anybody here for me. I might not have anybody to talk to, but I have God. I have God to turn to, to talk to, to pour out my heart to as long as I live. And he's given me stuff from the shipwreck. It's close enough to the shore that, that I can get supplies off of it. And this is how he closes. Upon the whole, there was an undoubted testimony that there was scarce any condition in the world so miserable. And as my condition, there was something negative or something positive to be thankful for in it. And let this stand as a direction from the experience of the most miserable of all conditions in this world. That we might always find something to comfort ourselves from and to set in the description of good and evil on the credit side of the account. So that's kind of a very confusing way of saying no matter what is going on in your life, you can set the good against the evil. You can set the thankfulness against the complaint. The, the, the house over your head, the roof over your head, the food that you eat. That's good things. You can put those against the evil. Are we, are we focused on the negative? Are we focused on complaining? Is that what we do? Yes, we do that. I, I don't want this to be said in my life. I don't want to be a procrastinator. I don't want to be negative and complaining when it really counts, when I could be thankful, and when I could get things done and have time for better things. I want to allow th the words that I say and the thoughts that I think to be towards gratitude. I don't want to just take from God what he gives to me, but I want to return to him. And I want that for you today. I want you to be able to return to God and receive that spiritual healing, that spiritual blessing that, that we all crave, that will make us complete. I want to be grateful for the things, that, the things that, that are real in my life, that I take for granted every day. This is how I want to finish today. We're doing Operation Christmas Child. And we are giving kids an opportunity to be overwhelmed at Christmas. And we might think these are just cheap little dollar store, maybe simple little things that, that we might throw away or never use. But the reality of it is, is that when you have nothing, this is like, it's, it's like Christmas. But it's like the Christmas when we're a little kid, when we, when we react so amazingly to it. We, we take Christmas and Thanksgiving as lightly as possible nowadays. We just, but, but look at these kids. They have nothing, and they receive this. This is like their life here. Their life has been, can be changed by this. We need to be people who, who look at God that way, who say, I had nothing, but God gave me everything. I can be grateful for that no matter my situation. I can look at my despondency and I can look and I can see my situation and I can say, yes, I might not have people in my life that can support me. Yes, I might not have everything. Yes, I might not have money. Yes, I might not have the, the support that I need, but God is still good. God has given me more than enough, more than I could ever imagine in Him. And that no matter what I lose in this life, no matter what I don't have in my life, I have an eternity to look forward to. I have Jesus. I have salvation. And no matter what happens to me, I can be thankful. And why should you today? Why should you continue in this life and never give up? Why should you be not nagging? Why should you not be complaining? Because of who God is. God is amazing and he is for you. And he's given you these things to be grateful for. Open your eyes today to what God has given you. Whether it might be something little like one friend, be grateful that you have that one friend. Maybe it's food, a little bit of food in the refrigerator, be glad that you're not starving. Whatever it is, we can be thankful if we see it through heaven's eyes. And that's all I want you to take away today. Is turn back to God with a grateful heart to receive that spiritual healing. Even if, you're the, if you have no reason to. Even if you're the least likely to. I dare you to do it because of who God is. 
You guys are so awesome, and I, I pray that you guys would be able to receive this, this, these blessings, and that you would enjoy your, your Thanksgiving and be able to give thanks and spend time with family, because that's what it's all about. It's not about the food, and it's not about the, the, the day. It's about being grateful for the family, for what you have, and being able to gather together and saying, this is who God is in my life. Enjoy it, family. Enjoy it.